Former US tennis pro turned conservation biologist Michael Fishback is the co-founder of the Great Whale Conservancy, an organization dedicated to protecting the whale population. Anthropogenic climate uh, disruption is really what climate change is. Where has 90% of the warming happened? In the ocean. In the ocean. In the ocean. I love working with people that are passionate that are experts at what they do and that are a little maverick, you know, not afraid of doing things their own way. His daughter, Delphi Waters, is also part of the team. She's been coming out here on the boat since she was six months old and about 10 years ago started conducting research as well. You know, everything we have learned about the, the blue whales of the Lower Rado region are from Michael and Delphi. But it's not so much the animal itself they're looking for this morning, rather something it's hopefully left behind. I got it. Uh, whale poop, I see it. My goodness, that's like a whale brick. Finding and collecting feces is just one part of their daily routine. When it's in the photic zone, it has phosphorus, iron and nitrogen in it and that mixes with the nutrients that are on the bottom of the ocean that are upwelling, and that blooms phytoplankton. So, th so th that fertilizes phytoplankton. So this is literally the stuff of life in the ocean. Michael's referring to a process called the whale pump, or put more simply. Everywhere I go, I talk about the poop loop. Whales excrete nutrient-rich feces, which feeds phytoplankton tiny plant-like organisms that help combat climate change by absorbing large amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere while simultaneously producing at least half of the oxygen on Earth. In turn, the phytoplankton feed the krill and the whales then eat the krill, up to four tons of it a day, and the cycle continues. The samples they collect will be sent to a lab where tests will measure the amounts of microplastics in the feces, as well as get a general idea of the animal's health. The thing about whales is that, and especially blue whales, they consciously migrate to an area that they know historically is going to have a productive upwelling. I mean, whales are a critical component and a conscious component. That's what's different about them. In our daily lives, we're not thinking about animals like whales or elephants. And yet, these animals provide ecological services that are important for humans to survive on planet Earth. 